All right, perfect. Now, this one we will practice in another table uh, in W3 schools, SQL, SQL insert. You can have this link in, you can find this link in the description. Um, but we can insert information into a table. So let's go here into this W3 school uh, insert too. You can see here there's also a bunch of keywords and all of them have description, introduction. So if you want to spend some time, additional time reading about different keywords and practicing them, you can do that here. Uh, so let's go and click on try it yourself. All right. Uh, gets us to this uh, SQL statement. So I'm I'm actually going to go probably to the shippers. So shippers has only three columns and three records. It's kind of easy to see the impact. All right. So um, so we're in this console, same console as here. You know, this console talks to the database behind the scenes. Right now, we just selected everything from the shippers table. Uh, we can add insert info. So, for example, uh, we can insert info without an ID, right? There's always have to be an ID. And ID um, is a primary key. If you don't provide it, it will be auto-populated and it will be just incrementing. So from three, we're going to go to four. In, to, in order to insert value into a table, you have to type insert into name of the table. So shippers, that's the name of the table right here. Then you have to provide column name and corresponding value. So shippers name will be Alex USA days and then column name phone and the phone number going to be 888-555-9831. So in the first line, we here provide insert into shippers and the columns, and then we say values and we provide values and the values will be corresponding in order with the columns that you have. If I run it, uh, I did not recognize this comma. Okay, updated the comma, run it again. Changes have been made, row affected one. Okay, let's get shippers one more time. Now I see that new shipper was ad added. Alex USA Days was added into the shippers table, right? Now we didn't provide shippers ID, but because it's a primary key, it was automatically generated. I do not recommend it, but if it is absolutely necessary needed for your testing, you can even insert with an ID provided. Uh, so you can say insert, so insert into shippers, now you can say shipper ID and then the provide ID that you want to insert. So same thing, insert into shippers. Um, so that's the keyword. That's the name of the table. Shipper ID is the first column. Shipper name is the second column. And then this is a third column phone, right? Let's insert this 10, Alex, you say days and the number. Uh, again, I have to update this quote. Okay, open shipper. So now we have record number 10 added. One more record was added. Was it was the primary key that we provided in the request? Okay, perfect. Um, well, sometimes uh, maybe we want to, we don't want to provide any values, just one. Just one one column, one column, one value, and you can do that. For example, you add in something for testing how the data is going to come back, where there are null values, uh, maybe on the front end, from the back end, right? So you can say insert into shippers, and I'm going to just insert the shipper name. This is crazy, and nothing else. And run it. Go to the shippers. You can see, yeah, the primary key started incrementing from the last value so from 10 from the value that we manually provided it was added 11 here is our this is crazy value that we uh, added and then there is null for the phone so no phone was provided nothing was populated here okay um all right 
and then there's update so you can actually update a specific record so let's say also you can do it for testing for sql testing at your work you need to update some test values to be whatever so for that you have to go with update command and you can issue update as your first keyword then you have to provide name of the table so shippers then you want to say set a column set shipper name column and then value what are you updating it to so we're going to update something in the shipper name to we updated this so some of the shippers name will be updated to the uh, we updated this text where now here's your condition where shipper id is equal to 10 where is our shipper id here so shipper id 10 this shipper name will be updated to we updated this let's run it get the shippers and look at this shipper id 10 shipper name we updated this and a phone number okay all right so now we get uh <laughs> we get to the most hard part uh, joining multiple tables together. Now, we talked about primary key and a foreign key at the very beginning um, of SQL introduction. So let's practice join, how we can do this, right? So in order to get join request, you need to, not, to add another table into request using join keyword and then specify primary and foreign key connection. All right, so for this, I'm going to go back to the Learn SQL here. And this is the statement. Uh, seems a little bit crazy first. Uh, let me comment it out and kind of dissect it. What are we doing here? So I'm going to just put comments. So this will be for reference for now. So very first thing, let's do this. We're going to select everything from patients. Let's run it. We did this before. Here's all the patient's data. Perfect. Now, I want to have some other uh, values showing. I want to show the province the patient is from, but not with ID, but actually a whole name. And uh, we're here in the schema. We can see there is uh, patients. We're in patients right now. And it's connected, the province ID is connected with the province ID in province names. So as I said here in the slides, first we need to join table and then we need to provide connection. So if I'm joining patients with province names, I need to do that. I need to say join province uh, names right province province names okay I can run this but it's gonna be a mess so this is not it right yeah I think I think it even hanged yep uh, it actually hanged so because when you join it without providing any details, it's going to create like, okay, what is going on? Uh, it's going to create a record for each uh, table, for each column with another column. So that that is not going to look pretty, right? And when you have like multiple records, it's definitely can break uh, your response. So let's do select everything from patients again. So we just request any everything from patients, run it, here we are. Now we're joining, uh, join province, uh, province name, ta names, table, right? Now we need to provide how they're connected. In order to do that, we we'll start with on keyword, and then we need to provide table name column equals to other table name column. So if we look at the schema visually, we need to say, okay, we just joined in province names, but we need to say patients.provinceID 
is actually equal to province names dot province ID. So we need to specify this relationship. So let's go and do that. So we type just the name of the uh, table. So uh, let's do patients dot province ID is actually equal to provinces names dot uh, province ID. Okay. So we specify this connection now. We can run it, uh, but because we have asterisk, it means it selects everything. All of the columns from one table and all of the columns from the other table. We don't really need this much information, right? So I only want to know first name and last name. And how I want to make sure it's coming from the right table, I can specify table name before the column name. So patients dot first name, patients dot last name. If I run it, now I have first name and last name. So those two columns are coming from patients, but I also join provinces names and I can say provinces names dot province name column. So this column, province name, will come from province's name table. Run it, and here's a province name. We can also have patients, and let's add a province name, province ID. So, so you can visually see the ID. So Ontario, and so on. So now we joined two tables together and got columns from different tables. Uh, one thing, though, you can see how you start typing out uh, table name and then column name. It can get a little bit long. So first time when you pull a table in, you can ha have an alias. You can say as to make sure you know it is an alias. Give it alias. Uh, let's give alias uh, to the patient. Give it P. And then let's give alias to province names column, uh, uh, province names table as PN. Now, everywhere else you use the name of the table, you can substitute it with um, an alias. So, everywhere else you can use for patients, you can use P, not, not where you pull it, just everywhere else. And then for province names, uh, you can use. PN. So the alias that we give here. Now it makes your statement a lot shorter. So delete this comment. So run it. And here we are. So we're selecting from patient's table column first name. Here we're selecting from patient table column last name. Here we're selecting from province names column province name. Here they are. They're all showing. Now here we're saying from patients as P, so patients table is pulled in and alias P is given. Join province names, so province names is pulled in and then alias PN is given. And then on, we're prov providing this referential integrity. We're telling uh, how those two tables are referenced, how they're connected. So patients province ID values column is actually equal to uh, province names, province ID. All right, we can put a semicolon at the end. Here's end of our statement. We did our join. And that's it. We're done. Um, so how QA engineer, what kind of testing QA can do on database? You can ask, right? Okay, what, what do I do with all this information? Well, when you work with database, you can verify database design and schema in documents versus actual return values. So you can take a look at documentation of whatever, for the, the test scenarios, right? For the for the business case, you can go to schema and say, okay, so patients have to have patient ID as a primary key, province ID as a foreign key, and uh, province ID have to be char two and maybe it's char three. You can verify all of this, like. You can verify the schema itself. If is this schema correct from what is actually existing in the database? You can verify columns and data types, uh, and what are primary key and foreign key. So you can verify all this within database, right? 
in documentation versus actual implementation. Uh, you can verify tables, data type in the columns, rules set in columns. You can verify if the data coming back is correct, right? There are no typos, uh, unique values are unique, null values uh, are there if they're expected or not expected. Uh, you can verify how, how invalid data is handled. So there's a bunch of things that you can do with SQL. Now, at the very end, I'm going to give you a very good life hack. Uh, if you have a specific like task on SQL, maybe it's in the form of a test case, uh, how can you actually use chat GPT to help with your SQL needs? So let's go ahead and grab a question. So I'm going to hit fuel questions in sqlpractice.com. Let's say here is a uh, Here's the task. Show first name, last name, and the full province names. Uh, okay, we have this complete. Um, show first name and last name contained into one column to show their full name. All right, let's grab this request. Uh, let's go to chat GPT and let's ask it. We can specify, you know, that it is SQL. Uh, but it knows, right? It already knew. So we can grab the response from ChatGPT, go back here, issue it, let's run it, and here we have it. So what ChatGPT did, it grabbed your question, analyzed it, understood it was SQL, generated a response, and you just grab the resp a response, put in console, and says select, and then concatenate first name and last name columns with a space in between, and show it as, you know, the alias, as a full name, right here, full name, from patient's table. And it returned, instead of last name and first name, two columns, it uh, concatenated them and returned them here. So ChatGPT is a pretty good tool in terms of helping out you with building SQL queries, uh, solving like SQL tasks, building SQL test cases. So yeah, make sure you use it. Okay, uh, so that's it. Uh, one small announcement. I updated uh, my Patreon page. I'm going to also provide it uh, in the description. Updated tiers. Uh, so you will see. Now you will see. Okay, here we go. Tiers. So you will see multiple tiers now i got four so quality cadets just for the support uh there's like early access uh behind the scenes constants uh when they're pulse exclusive over in power uh there there is assurance gurus for five so this will have live q and a's when i have those and work in progress updates so if you want access to the slides that's going to be with this uh subscription in patreon so link in the description um, there's also $10 a month, uh, and credits QA. So I will include whoever subs for this. I will include your, uh, names in post credits for the video as a thank you note after each video. Uh, as long as you stay here, I'll add your name at the end of the video. Um, and then at $25 is quality assurance one-on-one. -on -one, so we can have a, like a 30 minutes call, talk about QA career, go over interview questions, talk quality assurance. Uh, so a call once a month, but you have to be sub for a month. All of those higher tiers subs include all the previous benefits. Uh, so yeah, link to this also into the description. That's it. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too much. Uh, thanks for watching. This was Alex USA Days and bye-bye.